Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how to create this blobby mesh in Houdini. So let me isolate it and turn off velocity so we can see it a little bit better what I mean. So we've got this mesh and sometimes you just want to use mesh instead of the texture for your projectiles, especially with a, I don't know, third person view games or even first person. It gives it gives a little bit more volume to your projectile and in this case I decided to go with uh, this mesh okay so let's dive into Houdini and let's create this uh, graph for the projectile So I'm gonna start by pressing tab and start typing geometry. I'm gonna bring this node and I call this one poison projectile mesh. Dive inside and I'm gonna bring the line. For the line, I'm gonna create 10 points. I'm gonna add point jitter to it. I'm gonna zero the Y axis and display to actually see what's what's happening with this. I think the scale is way too much, so I'm gonna maybe keep it to 0.3. And also I'm gonna randomize the size of those points. Obviously we won't be able to see them, but when we use copy to points node, it's gonna just randomize the size of our spheres, which is gonna be next what we're gonna create. So uh, attribute randomize. So in here, I'm just going to use the attribute name P scale to randomize the point scale. And instead of going from zero to one, I'm just going to go maybe from 0.3 to one. And now I'm going to bring copy to points, copy to points node here. This one's going to go to the second input. And for the first input, I'm going to use a simple sphere the primitive type will be polygon and I'm going to ramp up the frequency like this. And this goes to the first input. And as you can see, we're distributing those spheres on those points. And now if you go to the point jitter, for example, you can go for the higher scale or lower scale. It depends what kind of look you are going for. Okay, so I'm going to keep it maybe to 0.5. And also for the randomized, if you want a more random, sizes you can go from 0.1 for example to 1. Okay I'm just gonna keep it a little bit closer so maybe between 0.3 and 1. Okay the next thing I'm just gonna use bend modifier. I'm gonna display it but instead of bend I'm actually gonna go for the taper. For the capture length, let's see first, let's tweak it so as you can see it's happening on the wrong axis. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to maybe keep a minus one here. And in here, maybe two. So obviously this is not what I want. So let me do it maybe again. And let's increase maybe capture length to maybe three. because I have to zero this capture direction. How about now? Okay, cool. But now I just need slightly more range. So now I'm gonna put two here. Okay, now you can see what's happening. We're kind of shrinking. We're tapering the bottom of this one. Okay, so capture length, I'm gonna keep it to three. For the taper, let's go with something smaller like 0.4 and maybe a squish as well let's see what squish, squish does all right so it squishes in the middle so maybe let's keep it to one or maybe 1.2 okay that feels a lot better so as you can see here in my opinion it just looks like we've got this uh, slightly larger here so this could be front of our projectile and then as it travels 
we got this distribution. The only thing is I, I really don't like how this distribution works right now. I think there's too much break here, for example. So I'm just going to go to the point jitter and play with the seed a little bit. Okay, so I feel this looks a lot better in terms of projectile. So I'm just going to keep it. Okay, so the next thing would be to create a VDB from Polygon. Because we want to merge those spheres together. For the VDB, I'm just going to go for the a very high res, something like this. So 0.1 into the voxel size. I'm just going to smooth it a little bit as well. So VDB smooth. SDF. And I'm going to use maybe this operation. So it gives me a little bit smoother results. And maybe higher iteration. Let's go maybe with five. Okay, now I'm going to convert that back into polygon. So I'm going to use convert uh, VDB. And I'm going to convert it to polygons. You can play with those settings if you want. I'm just going to keep them uh, default for now. Obviously, this is way too high res. So I'm going to use a remesh node. And in here, I'm just going to play with the size. The lower the target size is, uh, the higher the resolution you're going to get. Uh, let me check the poly count on this. So it's 3000 vertices. You can go with something like this or maybe even go a little bit lower. So you're going to get a slightly higher res. So I think this is way too high. Maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.07 might work. Okay, so I'm going to keep it like this and then I'm going to copy and paste this remesh node. So I want to, I can have a slightly lower res as well okay and for the slower res we can use this for the splashes that are gonna be behind the behind the projectile so we can maybe go slightly lower even so 1.2 i think it should be okay on view let's go for 0.1 actually we can always come back here and reduce it if we feel we've got too many polygons in the engine so i'm gonna call this one uh, LP and this one will be HP for low poly and high poly. So the high poly will be our main projectile and this will be basically as a splashes behind the projectile. Okay, now I want to actually have this projectile in the middle. So I'm just going to grab it from the high poly mesh and I'm going to uh, put axis align. We're going to get this node, lab axis align. If you can't see this node for some reason, it means that you don't have side effects labs installed. So what you could do, you can press this plus button, go to shelves and in here, you should have this available. Once you enable it, that shelf should appear and you can update the tool set or install it if you don't have it already. You'll have to uh, re um, reopen the Houdini. Okay, so once we have this, you can click click on match side and for example if you want this to be offset it just keep it default however I want this to be centered so I'm just gonna select this and as you can see it moves this mesh to the middle of the scene I'm gonna add some normals to it as well so normal I'm gonna go for 180 because I want this to be smooth and I'm gonna use auto UVs labs auto uvs and for the uvs i want this i don't want to display any texture on it so what i'm going to do i'm going to keep it as a one island and let me go to the uv viewport here so as you can see we got three of those i just want one as for the settings let's go with number of clusters now let's change it to cluster first, okay? And now let's go from number of clusters to one. 
maybe add some slightly blur to it. I'm not sure if that's actually going to do anything. Just going to keep it 10 or maybe 5. No rotation. Uh, let's see what else we could do. So why are we creating UVs like this? So we want to create erosion on that mesh, okay? And if we're going to have a separate islands, our erosion might be looking a little bit uh, weird on those uh, end of the islands, okay? And also we want to add the world position offset. So this blob method could actually use using the uh, vertices. So we want just want to keep it as a one island. The problem with this technique is that if you're going to use any texture on it, there will be a lot of distortions on that texture. Okay. So if you're planning to use textures, maybe experiment with two or three islands. However, for what I'm going to create, I just want this to be one, one island of the UVs. Okay, so let me go back to the normal viewport. And in here, I'm just gonna add engine scale. So I'm gonna use transform. And I think side effects recommends 100 when you're exporting back to engine. I'm just gonna use 50 because uh, I think 50 is a slightly better scale for me. So as you can see here, we're getting a little bit of distortion here on the texture. If you're gonna be using texture, for my case, I'm just going to be using this as a world position offset. So I want this to be as a one island. And I, I, think, I don't think this will be an issue in the engine. Okay, so I'm just going to export this. And also for the low resolution, I'm just going to replug our low res. And I'm going to export this one into the engine as well. And once you have this in the engine, you can add some world position offset to it to make it you know, wobble a little bit and distort the vertices over time. So right now it seems like it's a little bit too fast. However, once I enable the motion, you can see it travels so fast that you can barely see this. Okay. So you might as well disable, maybe you don't need a world position offset. I personally think it adds a little bit to the motion and I think it looks uh, slightly better. Okay, so it depends what you're actually going for. If you want the projectile to be textured, I'll create a couple UV islands and apply texture to it. All right, thank you so much for watching.